the atmosphere of, of fear just ruling the country and Putin just that is the main instrument at his hands and people are very much scared to, to demonstrate their protest, their disagreement with the authorities. It's absolutely awful, terrible situation. And of course, um, of course, it is clear for everyone in Russia that uh, Navalny was murdered. Uh, we don't know circumstances how exactly just the death came, but the, that is absolutely clear that for years he was un, uh, just unlawfully uh, was uh, arrested and kept in prison for three years and uh, tortured for three years. And uh, that is absolutely clear that full responsibility, authorities, and Mr. Putin in particular, just they, they, they have this responsibility. Uh, that is clearly, uh, and uh, there is no doubt about this. And we heard from Alexei's widow, Yulia Navalnaya, today that she believes that President Putin himself uh, will have ordered his death. And that uh, perhaps the authorities are simply waiting until Novichok or some form of poison leaves his body before that is released to his family. I mean, do you think that President Putin himself will personally have ordered Alexei Navalny's death? Uh, it is difficult to say. We don't know. There is no any, any information of that. Uh, it's the same happening just as happened with my friend... Uh, Boris Nemtsov, when he was murdered in the, in, the, in the walls of Kremlin, and that time also just investigation was unclear, and there was no real investigation, just uh, different objects was uh, disappeared, etc., etc. This same is happening right now. It is, it is not really uh, just important just whether it was direct instruction or not, but it is clear that responsibility, that Mr. Putin has full responsibility for this. It is, that it's absolutely clear. I hope, I hope that they will not uh, keep the body of Alexei for a long time and uh, independent doctors could uh, have their own investigation what happened with him. Do you think we will ever find out for sure how he died? Uh, we'd like to believe to have it, um, but uh, I'm not sure about that. So I'm not sure about just the, the who ordered the killing of Boris Nemtsov, and um, we don't know. And I'm not sure that we will we will know uh, who gave an order to kill the Alexei Navalny. That is that is the 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 the, the situation. But uh, sooner or later, when the the whole system and the whole regime will change. Of course, the possible possible I would say, information would be released and, uh, and the appropriate judgment will be made. You talk about when the whole regime will change, but do you think there is any realistic prospect of that, given the grip which President Putin has on power in Russia and the very tough penalties that there are in place for anyone who comes out and voices opposition to his leadership. You absolutely correct in explanation what is the situation in Russia. That is really, really the 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 atmosphere of of fear just ruling the country and Putin just that is the main instrument at his hands and people are very much scared to, to demonstrate their protest, their disagreement with the authorities. But um, of course, uh, in this period of time, despite of any I would say, wish and, and desire of people so that uh, uh, the movement would start, some, or some changes would start in Russia now, it is absolutely unrealistic at this particular moment. Uh, the grip, as you correctly mentioned, just very tough, and Putin controls everything. But the situation could change, and we know just in the history in, in our and other countries that dictators couldn't uh, couldn't um, uh, run uh, forever. It means just the certain circumstances could appear, which very quickly could change the whole situation. I'm sure something like that will happen in Russia. We heard from Yulia Navalnaya today that she is determined to keep up uh, the fight which her late husband pursued so bravely um, for a different future for Russia. How do you think those 
opponents of his regime, maybe even those outside the country, can indeed carry on that fight when we look at what has happened, not just to Alexei Navalny, but to, as you have pointed out, other people who spoke out against his regime? Uh, in fact, in fact, right now, for us, for all uh, all parts of uh, Russian opposition, we all are with the same with the same view. We against uh, this regime. We condemn just Putin's aggression against Ukraine. That's absolutely the case. We united in this feeling and these judgments, and uh, we cannot do more than that, other than informing people and explaining Russian people through communications we still have a little, just to inform them, just uh, and creating an alternative points of view on uh, a different judgment on, on everything what's happening inside Russia or outside. That is the only political tool that we have right now. Uh, but but and, and the keeping our, our uh, communications with the Russian people living in Russia, of course, that's important. It's important to to feel to feel just the the waving of the of the of spirits and the general attitude of of of, 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 of Russian people. But it is difficult to say that uh, uh, death of Alexei Navalny would uh, uh, say the make a spark or whatever. Just the the movement would uh, would uh, would inaugurate itself like it was in uh, the. the Five years ago, or whatever, just uh, ten years ago, it is, it is not it is not the case uh, and, and this particular period of time. What more do you think that countries like the United Kingdom, perhaps the United States, could do to bring pressure on President Putin? Clearly, there are already mm. sanctions, but is there more that you would like to see world leaders doing beyond condemning Navalny's death? Uh, there, there could be a number of a number of issues, uh, starting with the support to Ukraine, and uh, uh, just discussing about just how to support uh, Russian opposition, so that people who had to was pushed to, to escape from Russia could um, uh, find uh, their temporal um, temporal home on the, uh, somewhere somewhere in Europe, in Great Britain or, or, or US. And uh, in fact, uh, right now that is not a quite, uh, uh, I would say, a pleasant atmosphere for Russians um, uh, fleeing from from Russia outside. Uh, that is another another issue. But I think the most the most important thing is not not to allow Mr. to destroy Ukraine completely to to, to win this war. That, that is the most important thing, because this, if it happens, it means just the the danger and threat would even increase for other European countries and uh, even for uh, for countries um, uh, members of NATO. That's and we've already just, uh, seen uh, Ukrainian troops having to withdraw um, from one important strategic town in Ukraine in the last few days. Do you fear that President could end up winning the war or claiming victory somehow in the war? Not in this particular period of time. This is uh, withdrawal of troops from uh, uh, one town of Divk. It, it doesn't mean just victory, absolutely not. And that's what I'm saying. Just uh, the, the war already, Putin already just switched the war, the war to attrition. And that's why, that's why just he believes that uh, the uh, Western countries um, uh, would come to fatigue situation and would stop or decrease support of Ukraine. That's what he's, Mr. Putin is dreaming about. And um, he believes that Russian people would continue to uh, keep their patience and he continue to, to uh, use the whole economy, whole potential for, for the finance the war and to, to make the, the war possible. That is the, the situation he believes would be reality. And uh, we, shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't allow this reality to happen. That's why uh, Ukraine needs much, much larger support and consistent support from the United States, Great Britain and European countries. And just finally, you clearly feel that President Putin's regime should be removed, should be changed. Are you frightened at all to speak out like that? Uh, every normal person uh, should be scared about just uh, 
speaking openly and criticize the regime. But I am right now outside Russia. That's why just that's a little bit uh, better than be in Russia. In Russia, just of course, that is absolutely impossible. I uh, already would be killed uh, or, or just put in prison. That's why that's why just not only me, but many many critics of regime who are outside they they frightened of course, but they continue doing this because just because we should do this. We should say truth for uh, Russian people and for our friends here. Well, that was Mikhail Kasyanov, who's a former prime minister of Russia.